everyone, it's Liz Holterhouse from OBX for Sale Real Estate Group, powered by Keller Williams Realty. And I'm here today to continue our um, seller series, and we're on episode four. And today we're going to talk about pricing strategy. So we're going to talk about um, pricing strategy and why that matters. We're going to talk about um, what a comparative market analysis is and um, how um, we real estate agents or real estate professionals um, approach uh, preparing a, a CMA, a comparative market analysis for a seller. We're going to talk about some terms like um, buying a listing and what that means. We're going to talk about um, months of inventory and days on market, those things really matter um, to a seller. We're going to talk about upward trends, downward trends, and seasonal trends. So let's uh, dive right in and get started. Um, first of all, usually one of the first things that is talked about when you reach out to a listing agent, uh, a good listing agent should want to have a consult with you and just talk to you a little bit about um, your motivations, why you want to sell, are you looking to sell and upgrade, are you looking to sell and cash out. It's just really helpful for us to know what that big picture looks like for you. Um, what is your timeline? How long do you have to get this done? Is there a timeline or is there no timeline? All of that matters. And then what we need to do is really visit the home and take a good look at the house, the condition that it's in, um, whether or not it has the the needed and the wanted updates for the market, and the updates that are making it a little bit easier to sell and, and insure in our market. And we're gonna get into that a little bit deeper. Um, so coming to the property, whether you're with me or not, is, is really important. And in this market, we deal with a lot of second home owners and um, investment homeowners. And a lot of times you can just give me your, your keyless entry code and I will go in the house and, and do a, a tour of the home. And then one of the things that I'm going to note are any deficiencies that I see. I have a, a background in construction that's over 23 years strong. Um, I've been doing real estate for almost 30 years, so any deficiency or thing that just is glaring in my face when I walk in the door, good and bad, we're going to talk about. And so if there's a, um, a lack of good first impression that I think that we can improve upon, I'm going to say those things. If there's certain things I think you need to do to really maximize your pricing, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, the ugly, and and just the full honest truth. That's what you hire a real estate professional for. Um, so that's all part of the CMA process and then the visit to the home. Um, and once we've looked at the house and we come back and we've had our conversations and we have an idea as to what you as the seller want to do to get the home ready for the market some sellers don't want to do anything and that's okay but your price is going to have to reflect that and or your days on market and your success is going to be limited so we have to have a hard conversation about that do you expect to sell um, as is where is and and we'll go through that as well um, if you want to get the paint touched up the interior paint spruced up the exterior paint spruced up new carpet put in things like that <clears throat> as your agent excuse me <coughs> if you want to do some upgrades like um, interior painting freshening up new carpet, things like that. We're not talking about an entire remod. We're just talking about a, a, a fresh face forward. Those are things that as your listing agent, I can facilitate for you as boots on the ground here. I've got people that can readily do that for us in a timely manner so we can get on the market. Um, In a CMA, what we're going to do is take a really hard look at what is going on in the market and where the trends have been. And if you've been on my YouTube channel at all, 
you're obviously here today. And if you've watched our market videos for the last year, the one trend that we're seeing is that pricing matters. Homes that are overpriced are sitting longer. And homes that are overpriced statistically always get less um, when they do finally sell than their counterparts. So in 2023, 30% of all homes that sold required at least one price reduction before those homes sold. And they then sold for only 89% of their original list price and it took them 122 days to do so. So if you're carrying your house for that long and your expenses are five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month carrying cost and you're getting 89% of your list price, pricing matters. Getting it right matters. Time is costing you money. Um, having your property just sit out there on the market not selling. And the biggest, the biggest enemy of a seller is days on market. Say that again. The biggest enemy of any seller is days on market. Now, there's things we can do to trick the appearance of days on market. You know, if, the, if we've gone 60, 90 days and we haven't gotten an offer and we want to adjust our pricing and stuff like that, we can withdraw the listing and put it on with a new MLS number and it'll start the days on market over again. But with all of the um, technology that we have, it is very easy for me to see the overall total days on market and it's getting easier for the consumer to do that too. So that is a strategy that can work. It doesn't work as well as it used to work. Um, so the other homes that sold, I told you 30% of all homes that sold in the whole year of 2023 needed to do at least one price reduction before they sold. 70% of those folks got it right and they sold immediately. Not only did they sell for 99.5% of their original list price, they sold in just 36 days. So that is a huge difference in in list price versus sold price and carrying time. And carrying time equates to money. I don't care if your house is completely um, mortgage free, there is still a cost to carrying that house, taxes, insurance, utilities. And then it's the, the emotional cost of not seeing the results that you want and it's the um the delay in where you want to get right so getting your price right for the market matters um you can say well i need this or i want this or whatever but the bottom line is is that if your home is not priced right the buyers are not going to come that's just simple it's just it's just the way it is um, if there are 10 houses on the market very similar to yours and yours is the highest price house but needs the most updating do you think your home is going to sell faster than the rest of them it's just not um, not if all things are equal location is equal things like that it's just not you've got too much competition and you're going to be passed over if you've got a lot of competition on the market around you, it's you could you could um, do two things. You could wait and see if some of those go under contract, or you could get strategic about it and go in lower than all of those homes, hold on to your price, and then be the the first um, the or one of the first to sell. So pricing matters matters um, especially in the market that we're in now. Um, Dare County in Currituck County are definitely getting closer to a balanced market where it's not really all about the seller and it's not really all about the buyer. It's, it's definitely a negotiation. Um, there are still some homes and pockets of areas that are, are driving um, multiple offers. But then the other side of that story is just as extreme to where if the price is even perceived a little bit high, it's sitting for a very long time. And it's, um, and I say a very long time, it's not three, four, five years like it was in 05, but it is definitely longer than what 
um, most agents, what most consumers, and what most sellers are used to seeing in the last four or five years. Um, so in the market analysis, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at your home, we're gonna report back on what we think you can do to your home to get the maximum value out of it. You're gonna let us know what your comfort level is, and then we're gonna price it accordingly, and we're gonna look at all the things. We're gonna look at the past sold comps within the past six months. Um, if there's an outlier there, we're gonna to try to go back more or look at more comps we're going to look at the under contracts because they tell the past tell the the sold comps tell the past history we're not always going towards that sometimes we're going away from that and this is important to understand where have we been what are our current under contracts showing are those prices less than where they were six months or a year ago and then we're gonna look at the future. Where is the current pricing at? What is our competition priced at? And we have to look at all three. It's not about just what the solds are. You might see a sold down the street that sold for 800,000 12, 14, 15, 16 months ago, but if everything else has sold for 760 for the last six months, that is the new price and it's hard to swallow, but that is the new price. Um, if you go back to that $800,000 sold and that's where you wanna start your pricing, you're more than likely going to be part of that percentage that has to do one or more price changes, or reductions to get your home sold. And that's frustrating for everyone. So remember, days on market is a seller's biggest enemy. You want to sell in those those first couple weeks being on the market, and it's always a better position for a seller to find themselves with a lot of showings and more than one offer. It doesn't have to be 30 offers, multiple offers, just more than one person interested or um, promising to bring an offer because that stimulates everyone's um, aggressiveness on getting the house for their buy for their buyers so if I'm looking at a house and I know there's 10 showings today and my buyer goes in and he loves it I'm gonna tell him if you want this house you need to you can't think about this you need to be the first one to put an offer in um, so the days on market how you presented it all of that really um, matters so we've talked about um, days on market in depth quite a bit and how it affects the um, the ultimate outcome of how and when and what price the home sells for. Um, we're going to talk about a term called buying a listing. And this is where a realtor oftentimes um, an, an, a newer, more inexperienced realtor or somebody who just really wants your listing will take that listing at any price. They won't push back on you. They won't um, present you with a lot of data and a lot of reasons as to why the price is too high. And that's, that's, that is a hard, hard conversation to have. And, in, and you've got to be able to have it. You're, you're talking about people's um, biggest investments, their biggest sale that they might make in their lifetime. So there's a lot of um, faith and trust that goes into a realtor helping to price a property. So that realtor has to feel confident in what they're doing. And if they're not analyzing the market every month, every week, every day, if they're not full-time and experienced at what they're doing, it's a hard conversation for them to have. It's a hard conversation when you have um, plenty of experience and you know you're disagreeing with the seller. But my job, my professional job, is a fiduciary responsibility to you, and that is being honest with you and telling you where the, the market is. We can then decide if we're going to go your way or or the way that the market is predicting um, if you're just that uncomfortable with what I'm telling you it's not that I won't take a listing 
at a particular price. I just want you to know at that particular price, this is what I expect the outcome to be. And we'll do everything we can to you know, ramp up the marketing and get as many eyes in there as possible, do a broker open, do all the things to overcome that. But at the end of the day, a property is only worth what a buyer is willing to pay and a seller is willing to sell for. Again, repeat that and listen really closely. It's the property is only worth what a buyer is willing to buy for and what a seller is willing to accept. So it has to be a win-win situation for everyone. And therefore you don't need, a lot of sellers will go into a, a, a listing situation where they feel like they need a lot of room to negotiate. And that is not at all the case. Um, and in some ways that actually backfires on you because a lot of people aren't willing to negotiate. They don't want to waste the time. They don't have the time. They're here one, two times to look at property and then they're gone. They want to wrap it up and they want to go back to their busy lives. Um, and oftentimes there are pre pre um, conceptions and they can be misconceptions um, on a buyer's part, but they're still nonetheless there. And that buyer, and they'll they'll articulate this to their buyer's agents. I often hear this stuff um, from buyers. It's like, wow, that house just seems to be really overpriced. It's been on the market a long time. That seller must be difficult to work with, or that seller must not be willing to negotiate. That is what a high day on market is telling the consumer, the buying consumer. So we need to be able to overcome that. As a buyer's agent, you know, if, if, if I was representing that buyer and looking at a listing that has been on the market a long time that I feel is overpriced, I, I would say, let me look at the comps for you. Let me figure out where we should be. What do you think it's worth? And see where their mindset is. Sometimes they're very unrealistic. But once we've looked at the data and we've determined, okay, yes, this home is a little overpriced. Here's what it should be. Are you comfortable putting an offer in at this price? And if they tell me yes, we're going to do it. Because all the seller can do is say no. Again, that is experience drives you to that area, but it's that's a very hard conversation to have when you're um, a new agent and you feel like you're bringing an offer in that's low and you don't want to offend anyone. Because the last thing we want to do is offend a seller because then you risk the chance of getting an offer an outright rejection, which is never a good thing for a seller to do ever. I don't care how low the, the, the first offer is. Um, oftentimes your, your best offer is the very first one you're going to get. You need to work it hard and see where it goes. If it doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't go anywhere. But the last thing you want to do is let emotion take a hold of you, have a knee jerk reaction and say, um, no, I'm not interested in this buyer. They're crazy or they're, they're this or they're that. What you want to do is take a deep breath, sleep on it for 24 hours, come back, have a conversation with me, and we need to get realistic, especially based on our set of circumstances. We've been on the market X amount of days. We've had a bunch of showings. We haven't had any offers. This is our first offer. What are we going to do with this buyer? And we want to keep the conversation going. Um, we don't want to just send them a message that we are impossible to work with or we're not willing to negotiate. If you are, we're just not willing to negotiate at your price and there's a better way to handle that. So we can either counter back at full price or counter back slightly off of full price and just send them a message that, you know, we feel like we're too far apart to do anything more than this, but if but we are willing to come down in price. So by doing a very small negotiation back, it will often tell the buyers that. And the buyer then has gone through all the buyer buying motions of writing an offer. Now a, a switch has been flipped in them and they're in the buying mode and they may get more realistic on your, your price and your property. And if they don't, they don't but you don't want to make it impossible for that to happen. So, um, you know, there's no room for our emotion in real estate. And as a seller, this is definitely true. Um, buying a listing is where a realtor will list it at any price that you want. And I will 
do that most of the time. It has to be somewhat realistic for me because listings are expensive. There's a lot of marketing costs that go into it. There's a tremendous amount of time that goes into it. And I do all the things. So I put together a full um, marketing plan. I do professional photos. I do professional drone on everything. It doesn't matter the list price. I do video walk tours. I do coming soon marketing. I do marketing, paid advertisements, targeted ads all over the country. Um, I work my database every single day looking for buyers for my listings. Um, I share it with my database. I do all of the things to get your home sold. So there's a lot of commitment on my part. I have to feel like that commitment is being shared by the seller. Um, we do staging. Um, everything that we think the home needs that we can do and control, we will try to do for you, the seller, to get that home sold for the most money possible in the shortest amount of days. Um, so there is a there is a, a point where a list price just doesn't make sense. And if there's this huge gap between where I'm at and where you're at, and it's there's a lot of unrealistic expectations in the middle it may just be that that it's not the listing for me and that and I'll tell you that um, so but just beware that there are a lot of agents that will say we can list that at X because they're gonna buy that listing from you they're the highest bidder and they hope to get it on the market and then figure it out as they go along the way through price price adjustments and things like that but remember, go back to that stat that I gave you in 2023, and we will update those numbers when 24 is over. But 30% of all homes sold in 23 required at least one price reduction, and they ended up at 89% of their original list price. Everything that sold in the month of October, new, new listings going on that sold in the month of of October, um, those sellers got in the very high 90s of their list price. So there is a big difference there. Um, so buying a listing is something that you want to be um, aware of. And you as the seller also do not want to be the highest bidder of your property. It's hard. You love the house. You spent a lot of years there. You're selling more than just real estate. You're selling emotion a lot of times memories but you as the seller you need to take a a step back and look at all the competition and ask yourself would i pay what i'm asking for this house or would one of these other homes be a better choice so as a seller you don't want to be the highest highest bidder really objectively would you pay what you're asking for your home do you think there's something that a buyer is going to gravitate more towards um, and kind of bypass your house. Um, you really need to ask yourself those questions. You really need to take a hard look at months of inventory. And we are in um, Dare and in Kurtuk. We are leveling out to a balanced market where there's about four months of inventory on the market. We've seen it much higher during the 05, 06, 07 um, meltdown. But four months is a lot right now because all during COVID, we had no inventory on the market um, and things were flying off the market. And there was a lot of buying that was emotionally driven and um, it didn't make a lot of sense, but it was, it was there. Sellers loved it, but we're not in that market anymore. We are more back to a normal market. Um, some houses will still get multiples, some will not, some will sell, some will sit. And you just have to really um, be honest with what you're selling, how fast we think we can sell it, and what we can sell it for. Um, so looking at inventory and months on market and how your area, and we can drill that number down to micro areas. So you may be in Kerala in a neighborhood that has no listings in it right now. And that's a great time to be on the market when there's no competition. You could be in a neighborhood that has six listings. And it may be that I would say to you then, 
you know, I think it's better maybe if we pause, get ready, do all the things that we need to get you ready to go to the market, but maybe pause and see if some of this inventory clears itself. Um, we can easily see days on market, and if some of them are aging out, we think they're gonna expire, those listings may expire and not come back on the market, and you've eliminate, eliminated your competition by waiting a little bit. There's also times of the year that are better than others. Um, if you're gonna list in the spring, list early, January, February, March, because oftentimes after that, towards spring break, we see a 30% increase in listing inventory that comes on the market in preparation for the spring market. So beat that, be the first one out there on the market in February, and you'll be under contract and closed before that 30% comes on the market. Um, we want to look at upward trends, downward trends, and seasonal trends. Um, homes in the spring will usually sell for a little bit more than the fall. And the reason for that is the promise of the rental income, especially if it's a short-term rental. In the winter, the, the buyer is having to look at the deferred maintenance from the, the, the previous season. The previous owner has gotten the benefit of all of the rental income, and they're going to have to get the house ready and carry it until January or February before they start receiving rental income. So in the fall, we see um, a mentality where the buyers expect to get a little bit of a discount, and that usually holds true. Um, there's not as much urgency in the fall. And then when you get towards mid to late November into December, it can get very quiet because not, not everybody wants to buy a house or sell a house during Christmas. Um, we do have lots of clients that visit the area during the holidays, but oftentimes they're, they're busy with family as well. Um, so we want to look at the past, which was the sold comps. We want to look at um, what's currently going on based on under contract comps. And then we also want to look at our future comps, our, our um, active listings. What are they doing? How long is it taking for them to sell? Is the market saturated with active listings? Should we wait? Should we do some improvements? And I want to go back and talk about improvements again. There are some improvements that will pay you back in spades. A new roof is one of them. And it doesn't take long to get a roof put on. Um, there, If you have uh, your wind insurance through the North Carolina State Pool, there's a grant out there for, the, for new roofs. But a new roof or a roof that has not aged yet is so key in, in making your home more um, sellable in this market. And the reason for that is we have um, the insurance companies are pushing back on us. And I myself got a letter from Frontline this year saying your roof is 20 years old. If you do not replace it by your renewal in 2025, we will not renew you. And these are 35 year shingles. Now, they know statistically that a 35 year roof is not going to last 35 years in North Carolina with our heat and our sun and our wind and all the things. Um, so they're, they're being proactive in trying to get the homeowner to replace the roof sooner rather than later. And, and I, I understand that trend. So the age of the roof, the age of mechanical, the water heater, um, the age of that, um, whether the home has polybutylene pipes or not, are all very, very important issues right now with the insurance industry and the buyer's reissue rates. So your insurance may be affordable because you've had it in place for a very long time. You've had limited increases over the years, but a reissue rate on your house could be thousands of dollars more than what you're currently paying today. And that's where the buyer is going to be stuck with the lack of upgrades, the lack of new roof, the age of the water heater, things like that. So oftentimes rather than putting in new granite or something like that, a new roof, a new water heater, new HVAC systems where that buyer knows, you know, all it's just a feeling of relief that they're not going to have to deal with those items. And the insurance company is not going to be on them from day one that you've got to get these things fixed. So those are the type of trends that I'm talking about. Those are the types of trends that I will talk to you about as well as a seller. And then there's the the easy stuff, you know, the maybe 
sprucing up the front door, repainting it, um, the stairwells, just that first impression, making sure it's as good as possible. And then maybe adding some light staging or moving stuff around in the house or decluttering certain rooms, that type of thing, um, to stage your house so it looks as good as it can for pictures. And oftentimes this is simple. It's new bedding. It's um, bringing in new throw pillows, beachy, colorful stuff to add pops of colors here and there's bathrooms um, photograph better with nice towels hanging from the towel racks rather than, you know, bare towel racks all over the place. Um, we make sure the toilet seats are down. We make sure there's toilet paper on the rolls, things like that, that, um, that just make the bathrooms, the bedrooms, the kitchens, all the things just look so much better. So that all of that kind of goes into the pricing strategy. Um, I know what I can do, so I can advise you as to what I think all those things will do for the strategy and then looking at and digging down deep into the market trends, both past, present, and future, or how we um, present pricing to you. So I hope that helps. Um, if you're looking to sell in 2025 or here at the end of 2024, reach out to me for a buyer, or excuse me, for a seller consult, and we can um, start working on touring your home and getting a CMA prepared for you and just kind of presenting to you how we would handle that listing. Um, thanks for watching. This is Liz Holterhouse, OBX for Sale Real Estate Group, powered by Keller Williams.